Dr. Lipton and David Oliver to step down front. We have a couple of presentations to make early on. The weather is forcing us to be in somewhat of a hurry.
I've had folks from all over this state and from those in Raleigh and state government. All I had to do was to mention that I was from Cleveland County. And immediate credibility was established because of the great job that you've done. Our students have brought great honor to our school system. Our teachers and our administrators have accomplished much. I was privileged to serve with three different superintendents, Dr. Earl Watson, Dr. Gene Moore, and Dr. Bruce Moore. All three were great school administrators. Dr. Bowles is acknowledged throughout the state for his confidence and his expertise. He has a very confident central office staff and excellent school administrators. The members of this board seated here tonight are exceptionally qualified to provide great educational leadership in the future. Seated here with me are the incoming president of the North Carolina School Board Association, Sheriff Miller, the newest Raleigh Dingman Award winner as the North Carolina School Board Member of the Year, Richard Cooper. I predict great guidance and direction for the Cleveland County Schools from Dr. Jack Hammer, Kathy Fall, Jerry Hall, Roger Harris, and Philip Clark. Dale, who just left on, the, on his way to Raleigh to try to beat the weather, I've enjoyed very much serving with him. I want to thank you all for putting up with me, and you have my best wishes. Chairman, School Board Members, Dr. Bulls, that have come before you tonight uh, for your consideration and approval for Burns High School to take a 14-day trip to Malawi, uh, Africa. I believe this is their third annual trip to that uh, destination. Uh, the trip is uh, $3,000, and I spoke with Mr. Beam. He said, actually, uh, the students have never paid uh, a portion of that. They fundraised the majority of that effort uh, to go to that trip. Uh, you have received a PowerPoint. Uh, about that trip. Do you have any questions? Their goal is to be zero again. Okay. Their goal 
equals zero again, or a small b. So no change in the fundamental breach. What are those dates again? Uh, July 20th to August 3rd. That's the same three people. Yes, Mr. B. Same three people that have gone traditionally. Um, Reverend Glenn Walker, Haley Harris from Cleveland Community College, and Luke Bean from the high school. Swan song. That's correct. That's correct. Um, Mr. Chair, board members, I come before you tonight to ask for approval of the contract for digital imaging, document storage, store, uh, document hosting, and electronic delivery and retrieval service of student records and personnel records that contract name with the Vance Imaging System. Just a couple of highlights on the contract. The contract is your assurances for the quality of the documents that are being scanned and, and the retrieval services. Uh, the storage, uh, it's also a guarantee that the storage of records or personnel records are at Advanced Imaging at this time, and there's a guarantee of their protection until we decide what we're going to do with those records, and that being one of two choices. One of two choices, and that is either to reshell the paper copies or for destruction. Um, the contract also assures that the all records are at the property of the Board of Education. Uh, the destruction of the uh, records um, would be if we would do that, and which we talked about in our work session, would be under the regulations of the North Carolina Department of Cultural Resources. I have filed those forms. Those forms need to be in place regardless because we have already destroyed student records. I think that's your knowledge of that in the past. The contract also, um, we want to make sure that it can be accurately pre-audited and given to the board for control over the total amount of funds that can be expended uh, based on the contract. So we had a not to exceed provision added uh, there's absolutely no correct number here, uh, but the idea is to cap the expenditures at some reasonable, po reasonable point uh, that would require your board approval for any additional uh, funds to be. Uh, we have put 50000 on the contract for two years. That's 25000 a year. Uh, the cost uh, for the records, the subscription that we use in the HR department is $7,500 per year. And Dr. Fisher has estimated the cost of student records to be 10000 a year. Uh, so he does generate revenue uh, from the kiosks out here where people pay for their, their records. But it's still, even though he's generating revenue, his basic expenditure is around $10,000 a year. 
So that um, puts our overall yearly cost at around 17,500. So that puts them out at 25,000 per year for some unpredicted cost that may occur. So I ask tonight for your approval of um, this contract. I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. Before I ask for a motion, are there any questions? My memory was from the work session that the revenue that the kiosk generates from Mr. Fisher is more than enough to cover. That is correct. That is correct. That's a small big game in that area. That is correct. That's correct. Any other questions? What's the pleasure of the board? Would the contract be approved? Second. And moved and seconded that the contract be approved. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Uh, death was 
valves are falling. That's right, any kind of family right. issues, things like that, substance abuse, all of those things. In addition, if there was an employee that we thought had an issue, we could, you know, send them, but the but of course they could choose to go to. Well, I, as a principal, I use this mm -hmm. with the employee and the, the direct well suggested that this was available, and I, they found it very, very helpful, and I really think this is a great thing that we're providing our employees.
been the constant and constant in this uh, um, array of, of testing updates and accountability updates. Chairman, last week I talked with all four of the principals of the traditional high schools. They all support this change with the exception of one, and he was kind of on the fence, but he did tell me that every single one of his assistant principals supported the change, although he's a little on the fence. So there is support among our
through previous contracts with the same business right at $100,000. And we felt it was appropriate to just bring all three contracts to you for your approval so that the board did not have any, any problems with that $100,000 uh, policy. So we're going to approve all three? Yes, sir. Why not? Any discussion or questions? speech pathology assistant and, and gave an hourly rate. When I did the, the arithmetic, it looked to me like the speech pathology assistant was making more money than the principal or the teachers. Uh, was my pencil dull there? Or? There's one. Speech pathology is a very expensive process, Mr. Harrison, and we've not been able to hire all the people that we need, and that's the reason she's having a contract with these, right, these folks up here. It is an expensive contract, and it's guaranteed back through the uh, appendix, uh, X number of hours specified that they will be in our, our schools that period of time. But, but they are expensive services. These uh, services uh, for these uh, kids needing speech, they're basically federally mandated, is that correct? They, they are IEP driven, yes sir. And much of this funding comes from the federal government, is that not correct? That's correct. But we just can't find the people that we need. We need to find some people that live and work in Cleveland County that will take these jobs, and we can't find them. Is that, is that my understanding? We because just have to find Yes. They make more money going out on their own than they did working for us. That's really a part of a, really like a medical position almost in the medical field. So I agree. Yes. One of of the various words, you weren't able to speak well, and today it's very rare to find a student that's been in Cleveland County Schools more than five or six years, using the time there, uh, leaving the elementary level, they have, they have been cured. And I think that uh, speaks well of the success that we're having in, in reaching these kids. If I'm not mistaken, maybe after last University, at least in our area, that offers this. Yes, sir. And the last time it's been a few years since I worked with personnel, the last time I was involved, I think they let six students a year in their program. So you can see it's a uh, it's a very competitive application process and admission process. 
understanding, because we're not real sure, is my understanding, is my understanding that they're uh, welders, and it's kind of surprising because we just brought a group of welders previously. You know.
do some upgrading as far as the actual lockers themselves, but as far as the numbers, I think we're okay as far as assigning lockers. And that was their big challenge. They were having to, to share and that sort of thing, and, and with security, that it was so an issue. Just for paper, they no, no, they just didn't have the numbers.
recognition.